giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. So we're going to yep. jump into uh, some of our Dark Horse teams that we have. Uh, we only had two teams match in the Dark Horse category, uh, so we'll talk about those first, and we'll talk about some other Dark Horses that are our host pick. We're never going to be able to get to all the teams uh, that we can, but we definitely want to mention some that have popped out a bit. Uh, so, Tegan, uh, I'd like you to take it away with the team that uh, is pronounced AIMBOT, I learned, and not AEMBOT, because I had no clue how to pronounce that. Uh, in, I was about uh, to call it AIMBOT, so that works for there, me. I was corrected <laughs> last night. So it's uh, 64-43. Yeah, so 63, 64, 43, aimbot of, of Hillsborough, Hillsborough, Oregon, 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 I think your, okay, Oregon. I think your phone auto-corrected, oh, did oregano, it? Oh, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so out of was... Hillsborough, Oregon, we have the 38th most expensive team sold for $22 last night. Um, they'll be priceless for any alliance looking for a steal. Uh, there's just, okay, whenever I look at this robot, there's a lot happening. Um, it seems there's nothing they're not able to do with that giant suction cup. Uh, so with that, there'll be, you know, someone where you're looking for them to do, you know, anything. Uh, as one of the few low-only robots at IRI, and since d defense is paramount in Destination Deep Space, they're a solid pick. They average around 2.8 ranking points per match, so at IRI, I don't think they're going to seed, but it's still in the realm of possibility. Uh, but if not, especially because of the non-Serpentine style draft, they might be in that either like first pick of eight or second pick of one. So either way, I think they have the ability to go far in the Elims, uh, even though they're not necessarily someone who, you know, they're a newer team. They're uh, definitely this year coming to the scene. I don't think they've done anything else. Uh, I was talking to one of their mentors last night and I didn't you know, nothing major came across except for being ready to play and ready to bring it from the Pacific North Best Coast. Tegan, I got to ask you, is, um, looking at how this climb is here, obviously it's a very unique climb that they have. I mean, is there going to be enough patience at IRI to wait for this type of climb? Will we see something like this uh, prove value in the elimination rounds? I think especially, like, a climb like that, it's – interesting because you see the value and we saw it at worlds because it's what lost uh 54 6 and 13 10 and 9 30 worlds and uh, their backup bot that i can't remember the second you know having the ability to climb ends up being important and especially if you're pulling your defense robot which is what i likely think they'd be pulling them back early to do that climb and get those extra 12 points there will be some teams where that's not the right move you know there will be some teams where for them, it's faster to stick a suck climb on or if it's faster to just, you know, do a few more cycles. But I think with that, it's almost like how Nemesis did really well last year at IRI with the, you know, the triple climb that we never really saw otherwise work at a high level. Uh, it definitely has a time and a place, but at IRI, there are so many different types of high, like, competitive robots that I think it will, there will be a place for it. I don't know if it means it's with them at 11.14 and 2056, but there's definitely a competitive scenario where it's possible and important. All right, Ben, you're going to take us into our next team here with team number 1807. Yeah, for sure. So 1807 is Redbird Robotics out of Allentown, New Jersey. They went number four. They were the 28th highest ranked team in the draft and also went for $28 coincidentally. Um, they have been a really high pick at all of their events this year, including going first round in Curie. Uh, so that was pretty good. They uh, have really high cycle times, similar to 2910, maybe a tiny bit slower. They're not swerve drive. They could do level two cargo. Um, and they're a bigger footprint, so they're harder to facilitate double climbs. But they, they have the two hatch on the front of the cargo ship Sandstorm and really a, just a lot of capabilities that are very useful as a second round pick, if you want your second round pick to be able to do some offense too. Uh, so this goes back to where I was talking about for these robots like 2910 and 1307. Um, is there a world that we could see the optimum strategy play out more like Texas uh, Texas district champs with the 2.5 offense versus the uh, versus the two offense, one defense that we kind of saw um, both champs eventually devolve into in the end. So. Uh, I really don't know. I think they're really a dark horse pick for this one, 1807. They've got lots of upside uh, if you in a certain type of strategic scenario, but less so in others. So uh, we'll see. 
And we're going to uh, check out some uh, a few other Dark Horse teams that are coming up here. Uh, a team that uh, had a couple of wins this year uh, and didn't show up until the FRC Top 25 until late. Uh, but, Christine, tell us about team number 364. Yeah, so 364 Team Fusion out of Gulfport, Mississippi. They were the 28th most expensive team in the draft at $28. So this team, I didn't know a lot about them until kind of looking through the list and asking some friends like, hey, you know, what are some of the teams that stand out to you? Because I did not see this team all season and didn't see them at champs. But looking at their record, they only had four losses on their entire season. Um, They played really really well at Rocket City um they were ranked number one at both the Bayou Regional and on um their division in Carver at Houston Champs um they had a pretty solid alliance at Champs I know they didn't make it out of the semis but I think they're one of those teams once again who has a lot to kind of prove coming in because they had such a solid season uh leading up to it something that I noticed about this team and that you know looking back at some of the other fun show docs is that they really put together a solid alliance they know their abilities and they know what teams would complement them well so I think that they're they're definitely going to be a team to keep an eye on um I think that they're versatile and they'll be able to really complement another alliance really well have any of you guys seen um or like played with them I guess I know a lot of us are north champs people in here but um i got to watch them a bit i I watched them play actually at championships a bit uh and uh, you know they're a team that i think they they, it's kind of interesting because they fell on because you had 364 uh, as the first seed, and then uh, 4911 as the second, and uh, there definitely was a very uh, real scenario for a scorched earth over on Carver uh, mm. this year. Um, so I, I think 364 some people uh, maybe not confident in their abilities as number one alliance captain, but I thought uh, the robot by by the time they got through the two regionals, I thought was looking really good. Um, I I remember talking to a couple people in regards to uh, stats where they were at for that, and uh, their scoring was a little bit lower than like a 1678. Uh, that sort of thing, but they still were definitely out there. Well, the same division as them is why I, why I bring them up. Yeah. Um, but they're definitely still out there. I, I think at IRI, I think they have a fantastic capability to be picked up uh, as a perhaps an early uh, second round robot. Uh, could they go a little bit higher than that? Maybe. I don't really know if I see them getting picked in the first round of uh, that, but they could be a, an early to mid second round that complements a, uh, uh, a set really well. Um, this is a team that did rank number one though. So you might see them still rank high. I think that is still a possibility as they rank number one in their division at championships. Yeah. You yeah. could see them seeding. I think a lot of that will come down to schedule, but I think, um, I mean, the robot is, it's not, necessarily the top tier of iri it's not like that s tier but you could still see you know with a good schedule and consistent play you don't see it first in a division like by pure luck you do still have to put mm-hmm. some work into it so would be cool to see if they can actually you know keep it keep that like notch and uh if team fusion can be at the top again yeah it's you usually see a lot of seeds from three to eight at iri there's usually two or three of them that you really wouldn't expect. I remember that from almost every year. There's always somebody who's kind of unique in that role. So I think, um, you know, especially if they're, they've are they had this strong of skill of seeding this year, they could they could do very well. Yeah, Justin, why don't you that. take us around with our next team and team number 910. From Madison Heights, Michigan, Bishop Foley Catholic High School is the Foley Freeze. So the 16th most expensive team at just 36 bucks. Uh, only scooped up one blue banner this year, which is why I kind of listed them as a little bit of a dark horse. Um, they did have a really tough quarterfinal upset at FIM Champs. Uh, they were on the number one alliance with 67, of course, upset um, by the number eight alliance. But 910 was actually in our division, 3015, uh, at our, and our Archimedes division in North Champs. And I can tell you from firsthand observations, they are a very, very good team. Um, they were certainly in the mix. Um, we they were in our our top tier in the division and our scouting they played very well um and i just think that there's um a really good chance that they'll be in the mix this weekend to iri as well um maybe a little bit of a dark horse but we'll see i mean they get they got burnt by alliance selections a bit right where they end up seeding just did not work out very well for them they weren't picked up i think where some people thought they were going to pick them uh on the archimedes division so yeah I, i think uh you know just a lot of bad luck for 910 this season but a fantastic robot nonetheless justin for sure. Like right. their this was Good their fun. this was their first year doing swerve too, right? So I think from what I understood there wasn't a lot of practice time uh before the season, but now you've got like it's been what two, three months since uh I don't know how time works. But like it's been a while since, you know, the robot's been out of the bag. They're definitely getting better. 
Okay, PJ lied to me. I thought it was their first year. It's their second year. I forgot about 2015 because everyone wants to forget about 2015. <laughs> um, but uh, basically just, you know, for a team that's somewhat new to the swerve scene, you know, they could pop off uh, with that extra bit of practice. But I guess I'm here actually to talk about Team 2403. So contrary to Fully Freeze, we also have the Plasma Robotics team out of Mesa, Arizona. Mesa? Mesa? Mesa. Mesa? Mesa. Mm-hmm. Mesa. Uh, they were the 47th most expensive team in last night's draft, so they were in the lower half at $19, but here's the thing. At IRI, they may be an underdog or a dark horse, but they were the captain of the alliance that kept 254 and 3310 honest on Turing. They lost them in the finals 2-0, but they did post the second and third highest scores against that alliance in divisional elims. So with this team, they really have a lot of experience playing at that top level, and they do know what they have to do to seed high. Uh, Plasma would be a second, a solid pickup for most alliances. Uh, they've got that hatch autonomous. They've got offensive and defensive capabilities and a level three climb if needed. They came out of the gate at their first event with a level three success rate of 80%. Uh, so when that's what you're starting with, you know it's pretty solid to begin with. Looking at the stats, I think for them, their main area to improve is consistency. They're in the like lower percentile for the event of that, but they do have that high ceiling to improve too. So that's what they'll need to do to come out as a real dark horse. But for now, you know, depends on how seriously they take it. You know, if they're if they're there to eat the corn, they'll still be solid, but they could actually pop off as well. I think this is a great pick for a dark horse here, Tegan. You, you have uh, a team that was finalist three times, right? So, if, I mean, if you're in the fantasy way and you want to get finalist points, you're in great shape for something like that. But a team, you know, from Arizona, right? How many teams can you list off from Arizona that might be able to come in period, right? And then this team comes to IRI, uh, I think for the first time, right? And uh, it will be interesting to see, you know, can they get in the elimination tournament? Can they complement the alliance the way they need to? But I think it's a fantastic pick on, on your end here. Thanks. So I think next up it's Ben has the next uh, pick for us. Yes. So I'm going to talk about team 2168, the Aluminum Falcons, who for many teams may or may not be necessarily considered a dark horse uh, by the truest sense of the definition. But I think for IRI, this is probably a good pick here because if there's any team that I think about maybe coming out swinging and being able to compete at the highest levels with, with the teams that we've had in the lock section, if they've uh, shifted things right, I think this might be the team to do it. Uh, so they're from Groton, Connecticut. They went number nine uh, overall in rank in our draft at $40. So they've got four blue banners this year, including one district championship win with Christine's team. Um, and they, they for historically from last year and events prior They've really shown themselves to make continuous improvements over the offseason, which is why I think they might be a dark horse to really break into the top tier here, especially since we know that they have a suction climber cheesecake. So, you know, maybe they implement it on themselves. I think suction climbs are going to go a long way at IRI. So uh, we could see a lot of impressive work out of this team here at this event. Yeah, just to to add to Ben's comments, um, 2168 is a team that, I feel like in New England is is kind of underestimated. Every year they rake in banner after banner after banner, whether it's in district or out of district. Um, you know, they've, they they complement alliances really well. When we played with them at New England District Champs, the robot was really solid, even after playing so many other events. Um, you know, and they were able to really um, deal with defense and then kind of switch to offense, which was really great. Um, if their robot holds up, I think they have a really strong chance of either seeding high or getting picked pretty early on um i'm excited to see how they do they're a team that you know even if they are there to really win they're going to be having way more fun than anybody else out there and make sure you check out their sweet custom socks probably one of my favorite giveaways that i saw this year (laughs) and with that um, we're going to keep the new england trend going i'm going to talk about one of my favorite teams in the existence of first, um, it's team 88, oh yeah, TJ Squared out of Bridgewater, Massachusetts. And they were the 35th most expensive team last night, going for a whopping $24. Um, I love this team. I was lucky enough to host a district event at their school, but this team is massive and they've had a pretty, pretty solid season so far. Um, you know, their first few district events weren't the way that they wanted them, and they ended up either being finalists, semi finalists. But their robot just kept getting better and better throughout the season. They added a climber um, or a L3 climber um, on towards the end. 
of their season. They have a really ridiculously strong Joe Johnson drivetrain. If any of you who are watching right now don't know who Joe Johnson is and you are going to IRI, I don't know if he'll be there, but if he is there, he's a tall blonde man. You should go talk to him. He is a legend <laughs> in the FRC community. So he's been mentoring their team and you can see that the their robots have definitely um, taken a, a shift towards some really unique um, designs, but they have a lot of experience under their belt. They weren't quite sure if they were going to actually make it to champs this year. Um, they were right on the bubble, but they made it in, and they ended up being, I think, semifinalists on their field with um, 103 and somebody else who I can't remember. They have really consistent autos. Um, they're really great at switching from you know offense to defense. They have this gigantic arm thing that can kind of reach over robots that are playing defense on them. And, yeah, I'm excited to see them play. Um, love that team. They're gigantic. You'll see them there in a, you know, sea of tie-dye. So good luck to 88. Hope you guys get picked. And they were with uh, 449 and 3555 were the other two robots that interchanged mm -hmm. in those matches. Awesome. All right, so I'll finish up with our last dark horse from Hollis, New Hampshire, Hollis Brookline High School. It's the Force team. So anyone watching the Elims on Curie saw the defense 1073 is able to lay down, and more than one of the teams that I arrived probably saw it too. Uh, I don't think they'll necessarily be ranked high, but the question kind of maybe to everyone is when when do you think they will get picked? I think it's tough to it's tough to let them fall too far. I mean, if you're if you're a low ranked alliance and you feel like you're going to have a battle on your hands facing one, two, or three. Do you pick? Do you pick 1073 and the whole di the variance in the IRI um, alliance selection um, process makes that a little bit different as well, uh, a little bit more interesting maybe. So um, I, I think they'll I think they'll be picked. Um, it just it's kind of a matter of where. Uh, maybe a true a true dark horse. And somebody mentioned in the chat that they built a fresh robot just for IRI. So um, <laughs> their uh, scoring oh, might be a little bit better too. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Does 1073 get picked? Oh. Where, where do they get picked? Is I mean, it, I, are they not in it really at IRI? Is it more offense or, or what? I don't know. I So I did a behind the numbers with them, and it was pretty interesting talking to their students about, you know, the design of their drivetrain, which is a ton of wheels on a pretty small robot. Um, but I think that the strategy that they implemented at Champs to beat, you know, the powerhouse team of or alliance of 2056, 1114 is something that anybody can go and implement with the right kind of, I don't know, like dynamic amongst a alliance um they were really smart with their alliance partners about you know keeping an eye on refs keeping an eye on counts um and really communicating so i think yes they'll get picked because they had such a great run at champs but do i think that they're the only team that can really execute that type of defense no but i think that after seeing that type of defense get played um by an alliance and with them being really the standout member of that alliance um I think people are going to really implement the type of strategy that they played with their alliance on Curie. So I I would assume they get picked, but I think that it could be done by other teams. Gotcha. Uh, I think I'm in for 1073. Uh, do they get picked? Yes. Uh, where they get picked, I think it's going to be a late third, early fourth, uh, or late second, early third round. Uh, rubber. I, so third or fourth robot on the alliance uh, for something like that. And, and here's why. I think the versatility that they bring, it, I mean, if, if, if they're still around by the last round that comes around, why wouldn't you pick them up just to have that in your back pocket uh, just in case? Uh, could they go earlier? No, I don't really see it unless unless there's some drastic change. And it looks like it's, uh, that it's just the uh, fresh dry train. So it doesn't look like they're, they're changing other components of their robot, uh, says uh, Connor. So that will be... Uh, it'll be interesting to see, but do I see them going as essentially a late uh, third robot, early fourth robot. Uh, I think that's where they go. Uh, to me, it, it makes sense to pick them up. I mean, if they're around as the last pick in the draft, why the hell wouldn't you pick them up? I think that'd be uh, a little surprising, but we'll see. Uh, anybody else I mean, comments? I'm going to disagree with you on that. I think defense is overpowered in this game, and 1073 has shown I think because of, you know, the stage that they did it on, like they pulled off some pretty impressive defense and that was mostly due to their driver. Like that was in incredible driving, but the defense is uh, something where at IRI, there's a lot of teams who are, you know, they've come from being the best teams in their region. They've come from scoring and they're not going to want to play defense, but it is such a critical part to the meta that, you know, having that team that, you know, will be willing to do it at the drop of a hat. I think that's something that would come valuable. And I think because it's the reverse Serpentine, 
you know, I don't know how much 20 or 1114 really wants to, you know, get beaten by 1073 again. So I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> that's if point. that's their next robot, right? Like, it's not necessarily who's the best robot to play with, but who do you not want to play against? You know, so I know yeah. I'm looking for a team that, you know, if I want to make a statement on my alliance, or maybe even if I'm looking to sub myself out as a captain, that's someone that you want to pick. Because that's someone that can really, if you're a low seed, that's your best chance of beating powerhouse teams. And if you are a powerhouse team, you don't want to get beaten by those lower seeds. So I'm going to disagree and say that they're going to be a late third, early fourth. And I'm going to say that they're going to be a late second robot, early third robot. Yeah. I mean, I I hear everything you're saying and I think it's valid. But at the same time, the level of play that's going on at IRI, you need offense as well. And watching them play at Battlecry did not see a whole lot of offense going on because the level of defense that was needed there wasn't necessarily the Curie kind of um, defense situation. So mm -hmm. I'm curious to see just in general how much defense is played at IRI. In New England, it's basically all that happens except for the few teams that actually end up yeah. scoring game pieces. So it's kind of second nature to any New England team. But I, I don't see a purely defense robot being a necessity at IRI with the level of play that we're seeing with offense and other things. So, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I think 1073 is a great team, and I'm excited that they're at IRI this year. Mm -hmm. All the students were super pumped about even just getting the experience, so I think that'll be really good for them. But it will be interesting to see what teams are going to be able to pull off some really smart defense in mm -hmm. a limbs. I don't think we'll see it as much in, yeah, for sure. in the quals, so... Speaking of which, uh, chat, we'd love to hear from you on where you think 1073. Do you think they're going to get picked first off? And if they do, where do you think they're going to go uh, in the elimination tournament? And we didn't check in with Ben yet, so I just want to give Ben a, a shot to, uh, to express his opinion on there. Uh, how about you, Ben? Where's 1073 going if they are? Oh, I, I don't know for sure. I think that I think they'll get picked mid. Um, I'm going to split the middle here. I think they'll, <laughs> they'll get picked mid uh, mid second round. I think that there's going to be a team that's looking at this like, oh, there's no way I have the offensive firepower. I should take 1073. Um, whereas I think a lot of the the one and two alliances are going to be trying to facilitate triple climbs and things like that with all the section climbers. So, you know, I, I, I think this could go a number of different ways. There's a number of different strategies people can play. Um, and 1073 is kind of nice in that they're, so far they've shown themselves to be unique, but we could see there's going to be a lot of teams here who've traditionally played offense that are going to go all defense, and we could see something, you know, show up like uh, tw uh, 2655 last year would be an example I'd have. So, you know, we'll see. And I just, uh, as one team to shout out, I got a I got a message from a certain drive coach on 2056 that wants to give a shout out to uh, 107 uh, as well too, uh, to see where they uh, end up. So they had an interesting climb on their end. Uh, so don't forget that you can uh, select your own fantasy team with the Pick'em League. Once again, uh, go to tinyurl.com forward slash fun IRI. Hey, guys, uh, listen up here. Uh, if you decide to enter this draft, it closes at Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, whoever wins is going to get a Cooler Master keyboard and mouse set. Uh, and, and apparently it was a typo, by the way, from uh, the drive coach, but we'll get to that later. Uh, sorry, Tyler, you know, if you're messaging me during the show, it's hard to keep up. But, um, uh, so uh, with that said, uh, make sure you uh, get, get yourself the uh, Cooler Master keyboard and mouse kit for that. Uh, that's for our winner. So go ahead and click that uh, draft as well, too. A couple comments in chat uh, as well. Uh, somebody asked if 1073 is bringing their driver or not. And that's always an interesting topic for any team, right? Is are they playing with their, their drive team? Have they moved on from it? And that expresses a lot with the competitors. So I'm not sure on that. Uh, Bill B uh, says, I first picked 1073 as an ace seed. Uh, interesting uh, decision yeah. on that. Yeah. So just I so could, the number I, one seed doesn't have them. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, and then Connor, yeah. Connor in chat says early second round uh, pick uh, as well, too. So. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.